Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is our Labor Day video. I got to thinking a little bit about Labor Day and what Labor Day means. One of the coolest pictures I've ever seen is that picture of, uh, of the iron workers on the beam uh, building Rockefeller Center, 1932. Just happened to have a print right here. Now, the reason I got this print was years ago, I got a really cush job. Cush, metallurgical lab, air conditioned, failure analysis, microstructure, materials characterization, hardness testing, all that stuff. Learned a ton, all this and a paycheck too. So I figure I'm gonna put that on the wall. Every time I start to get the least bit disgruntled or dissatisfied with my job, I'll look at this picture, it'll make me more thankful. Well, <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> it did not work. <laughs> it didn't work not because of the work, the work was great. Not because of the guys I worked with, they were great. The guy I worked for, not so much. So, you know, it doesn't really matter what, what kind of work. I can enjoy pretty much any kind of work if I'm working for good people. So anyway, I'd share that little tidbit with you. And today's, this, this, that's my Labor Day, that's my Labor Day message. Hats off to everybody that works for a living. And be especially thankful if you got a good, if you work for a good person. I wondered if he would ever quit talking. Now there's a stack of metal, all pre-cut. Found a really good deal at a place in Chattanooga that, that cuts stuff like this, flame cuts and saw cuts and everything, so made sense to just order it like that. Now, I'm using this little uh, downdraft table here that I made some time ago. I did three or four videos on the, uh, on the making of it because things got in the way. I didn't just start and then never stop start to finish, but I'm going to include a few little clips on, on that and also on the web page where this will be on my website, uh, WeldingTipsAndTricks.com, there will be uh, a PDF set of drawings if anybody's interested in making something like this. So it's, it's just basically got a little funnel inside of it, a duct that, that uh, directs all the debris and sparks down into a tray, and then a, a attachment that um, this little scoop here where the fume extractor will hook on. Not everybody has a fume extractor, I know, but I happen to. I happen to. But I'm sure there's plenty of ways also that you could just hook up a blower motor and, and get the stuff outside. Not so much with uh, oxy fuel and steel, but when you're plasma cutting stainless and things like that, it makes some fumes. And if you can just blow them out away from your breathing zone, it, it's a big deal. Helps a lot. So I got this little telescoping uh, handle here that goes out. It probably needs some gussets on it, but. Again, it's kind of like a prototype stage here. And I hooked the, uh, the scoop on there for the fume extractor, and you can see it drawing. The, there's no smoke coming up at all from this paper towel burning. You can't smell it. No smoke. So it's got a really good draw on it from the, uh, from the Miller fume extractor there. And there's the Miller Spectrum 625 Extreme, a really good little plasma cutter. But for cutting little quick cuts like this, little throw a piece of round stock up there and snip it off, or a piece of bar stock, this thing is, is extremely handy. And like I said, I got the little telescoping thing there that I can put a, a sheet on and uh, not flop all around. So turns out to be one of the most useful things I ever built. Back to the rest of the project here. This is 4-inch tubing. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to get a, a quick dimension off this 4-inch tubing. I want to see if it's a little over, how many of them are running a little over 4 inches. And then I'm going to lay, lay out some cut lines on this 3x6 here because that notches right in here. It kind of nestles in, in the end of it. So this is the wide base square. It's called the La Square. It's from LaJessProducts.com. And is it a little pricey and some, sometimes the shipping seems a little pricey but it, it, it is so useful so I'm really happy I got it. So I'm laying it out here. It's really good for square tubing that you can carry the line over the radius like that whereas it's really tough to do on a on a narrow base square. And about ready to cut here. So we're firing up the cutting torch. Adjust uh, acetylene till the smoke pretty much goes away right before it's about ready to jump off the tip so I can get the most out of the tip. And making a decent cut is, you, it has a lot to do with using the right size tip. You can use one that's too big and you can just go a little faster, get a little bit wider curve and everything, but it usually does not, does not do as good a job, make a square cut and everything as, as the proper size tip. 
So you can see me the way I'm propping here. This is just I'm kind of making do. Ideally, I'd have another piece of metal or a block or something up there the same height as what I'm cutting, but I couldn't find one, so I'm just improvising here. And so you see how far I've got those cones off of the line. A lot of guys will, will, will use a lot more standoff than that. I've seen guys like experts at welding shows hold it like an inch away and make a, make a beautiful cut. But that's under pristine conditions and everything is just right and brand new. And this tip could use a little cleaning and, and whatnot. So I, I generally tend to hold them fairly close. So it needs a little grinding. Not a perfect cut, but just a little bit of grinding and it's going to be good to go. I'll do a little fit check here with that 4 inch. In just a second, I'll throw a straight edge up on the top and see how close we are. And we're within maybe 50 thousands or so, so close enough. So I'll throw that one off and throw another one on, and we'll do a little plasma cutting in just a minute. Now for plasma cutting, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the Miller fume extractor there to that little snout that I built onto this thing. And again, this is the Miller Spectrum 625 Extreme, about as big as a little lunch pail and yet rated for, I think it'll cut 5 eighths of an inch, and it, it will do it conservatively. I've got it maxed out. It's a 40 amp machine. I've got it up to 40 amps, and I'm gonna just going to try the, the, using the drag tip and seeing if that'll uh, work okay on this 3 eighths wall tubing. And it's working. I'm having to go along a little slow. You can see there at the beginning it kind of blew back on me a little bit, but still cut all the way through. Not a bad, not a bad cut. And generally, I find that if you can if you can clamp a straight edge, it's going to be straighter than you can than you can cut freehand most of the time. So I'm just using a little piece of aluminum T-joint here for the straight edge. It's working out pretty well. And again, you can see that that fume extractor drawing all the sparks and smoke and everything downward. Again, one of the handiest things I've ever built. I built I built one uh, a little over 20 years ago, and it's it was still being used when I left the job that I built it on, and, and it uh, just super handy. Again, we'll have to throw a little grinder on it, knock the slag off, but it, it's it's pretty close. Now, again, this is the drag tip. This is on just eighth wall tubing with a with a straight edge. That usually works out pretty good. You can also just freehand and use the freehand tip and you get a little bit more out of it and a little bit more freedom and it's easier to see your standoff and your everything. And one thing about plasma cutting that I didn't mention earlier, this is a piece of stainless steel angle iron. You're not limited to material type with, the, with a plasma like you are with OxyFuel. And here's the, the other type tip, it's not the drag tip that you use for freehanding. I'm putting a bevel on a piece of 3 8 plate here, so it's it's essentially almost like cutting 5 8 or, or or a little thicker, and does that no problem. But definitely choose. To, I definitely prefer this tip for beveling as opposed to the drag tip. Makes a nice clean cut. Now you do need dry air, adequate air pressure, and clean air. And so the first thing I did when I got this thing is I installed this little Miller air dryer dealy here, and uh, it's, it's worked really well. It's, it's all about using good, uh, good quality air and good new, new consumables when you can. These are brand new right here, the drag tip. And I'm going to lay a straight edge up here and make just a really, really narrow cut. You can see how tight and narrow that kerf is with a brand new, brand new tip and brand new... Uh, a brand new electrode, brand new nozzle, and brand new everything. Same thing with the freehanding tip here. You get more capacity as far as how thick you can cut with one of these tips, and you can cut thicker with a brand new tip than you can with one that's old and kind of worn out a little bit. You don't get as much as you don't get as stiff an arc or as pinpointed a, a plasma plume. Now I'm cutting different materials here. That was chromoly. This is stainless, just to illustrate the different materials you can cut. This is some nickel base Inconel. These are all in the, in the 30 to 40 thousandths range. It just zips through them like butter. That's aluminum, magnesium, and here's a little piece of titanium with the bright white sparks. So it just doesn't care what kind of material it is. Here's a piece of 3 16 that I had to 
to rip a piece off of because it was it was a little too wide for the for the job that we're working on right now. Just clamp I just clamped a piece a straight edge on it and uh, drag it nice and slow and it's going to make a really nice cut. Just going to take minimal dressing up before it's just good to go. I'll show you that in just a second. Minimal slag and it comes off really easily with a good finish. Well that pretty much wraps it up for oxyfuel cutting and plasma cutting. I make a video like this every single week of the year and then in order to offset some of the costs for rods and argon and all that kind of stuff I put them all together on on DVD discs and offer them up for sale and that really helps a lot in, in uh, offsetting some of those costs. Now they are up for sale at weldmongerstore.com it's over seven hours worth of content it's four discs but there's also a fifth bonus disc which is a jump starter TIG welding basics DVD to get you started off on the right foot and what to practice on to get better TIG welding. Now why would anybody why would anybody buy DVDs of videos that are available for free on YouTube? Well I put that bonus disc in there to, to add to the, to the value like that plus some people have a slow connection if you're on a long flight you can put pop a DVD in without Wi-Fi it's higher definition video, easier to see the puddle, and all that good stuff. Right now there's a deal going on for a t-shirt and a, and a 2012 DVD uh, disc set along with the bonus disc for considerable savings on what, you, what it would cost if you bought them individually. So that's about all I got today. Hang around, watch all these little clips here so you can tell if this is something you'd be interested in. If it is, just, just go to weldmongerstore.com. We will send it just about anywhere in the world.